Hi everyone, this is Akhila Sodi and I work with the Integrated Transport Team at WRI. In today's lecture, we will look at how we can design safe cycle lanes for Indian cities. But before that, a quick introduction to why this is relevant to you. We all know that COVID-19 is changing how we move in cities. We know that earlier this year when the lockdown was in force, there was a drop in travel demand in many Indian cities and especially there was a drop in public transport ridership. But later in the year, as certain relaxations were made, travel demand did go back up. But along with it, we saw a rise in road congestion levels in cities like Mumbai, Delhi and Bangalore, taking us back to almost pre-COVID levels. This also took us back to pre-COVID levels in terms of the air pollution levels, noise pollution levels and so on. But along with this, there has also been a very interesting uh, trend. And that is over the last six months, India has actually been witnessing a mini cycling revolution. Uh, you know, in this sense, experienced riders across the country have been inviting new cyclists to reclaim roads for them. There's been over a 40% growth in the cycle industry and several app-based companies have also been uh, planning their expansion to uh, several other uh, Indian uh, cities. Along with this, the government in places like Kerala, Chennai and Kolkata introduced initiatives to prioritize cycling. And uh, as recent as July, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs launched the Cycles for Change Challenge, which was basically to help make cities bicycle friendly post uh, lockdown. And in some cases, like in cities like Bengaluru, the implementation of cycle infrastructure is underway. We've been working very closely with the BULT, BBMP, the Smart City Corporation, the Bangalore City Police to deliver the, a cycle track along the outer ring road as well as two lanes within the smart city. This phenomenon is taking place at a global level where cities are very quickly implementing ambitious schemes that repurpose street space while prioritizing cyclists and pedestrians. And we'll see more examples of this later on in the presentation. But what is important for now is this that cycling has the potential to emerge or has likely already emerged as a very safe, resilient and reliable travel option. This helps people to sort of meet their travel and mobility requirements, but also gives them, you know, the opportunity to step out for their uh, mental and their physical health. What is important to note now is that these lanes, as we see them popping up across the country, they will form the foundation for future bicycle networks in the country. And this is why it is extremely important that we get them right from the start. And in all of this, we prioritize the safety of the cyclists while doing so. So how do we create a successful bike network? What are some of the guiding principles we must follow? And how do you design safe bike lanes? How do you look at management and uh, enforcement and uh, communication around you know, these bike lanes? The rest of the presentation will focus on answers to these questions. And uh, I invite my colleague, Nikita, to take us through the safe bike lane guide prepared by WR. Over to you, Nikita. Hello, viewers. My name is Nikita Luke, and I'm a senior project associate with Health and Road Safety at the World Resources Institute. Today, we will be looking into the various design guidelines and measures, as suggested by experts from around the world, to help us create safe and comfortable bicycle lanes in our city. So let's get right to it. As we all know by now, traveling in crowded buses or metros and even taking taxis has become a risky option. As a response, cycling has become a popular travel option. Therefore, cities around the world are rapidly finding design solutions to accommodate more cyclists and pedestrians on these streets. As you can see in the example here, cities are replacing one or more car lanes by two cycling lanes. And India has joined this effort in promoting safe and comfortable cycling infrastructure. So many of you might be wondering if cycling lanes lead to more traffic congestion. Let's find out. As you can see here, one of the greatest things about riding a cycle is how little space it takes as when compared to cars. And uh, we often assume that if we take away road space from cars, it leads to more traffic jams. Over the years, governments have tried and tested various methods such as increasing street widths or increasing the number of car lanes, but have failed. 
Building roads to accommodate cars is a wasteful way to transport a lot of people. The only real way to reduce traffic congestion is to have fewer cars on the street. And we can do that by giving alternative sustainable transportation options to people. And one way is to create safe cycling lanes. So let us dive into the four key strategies that we as planners and engineers need to keep in mind while designing cycling lanes. Include cycling as a part of city planning. So successful bicycle-friendly cities have incorporated cycling in their transport plans and in their future urban projects. Including cycling in city planning is a good first step and will eventually lead to a bicycle-friendly city. Second, consider the duration of measures. The duration of a non-permanent bicycle lane will range from a few days to a few years. Therefore, it's important to keep in mind the goals that you have and the, the total project duration. Third, build the case for permanent changes. Temporary cycle lanes can help increase awareness among the public and provide opportunities for new cyclists to test out the infrastructure. And this also gives drivers an experience to understand the changes happening in the street. Evidence has shown that once people start using these bicycle lanes, they become more frequent users over time. Fourth, allow for improvement. The good thing about temporary cycle lanes is that it can be adjusted even after implementation. Chain changing designs to address issues that come up after implementation is a normal and expected part of the process. So what does a successful bicycle network consist of? A safe cycle lane should be designed for the vehicle speed of that particular street. The design should be easy to understand. Cyclists and drivers must be visible to each other. And it should also reduce the chance of a crash or a collision between the different kinds of road users. Cycle routes should be direct and allow cyclists to reach their destination safely and comfortably. A cycle lane should be well connected. It should be continuous and link various important destinations and also transit stations to help with first and last mile connection. And lastly, it should be both comfortable and it should be attractive for users. Now, let us explore the various guiding principles to keep in mind while designing safe cycling infrastructure. Safe speed. To encourage cycling, vehicle speed should be kept at a low. This can be achieved by combining both design measures as well as enforcement. Network approach. Cycling lanes must pass through important destinations such as hospitals, shopping centers, schools, parks, and playgrounds. And this should also be connected to mass transit stations and improve first and last mile connectivity. Management and enforcement. Encroachment on the cycle lanes such as vehicle parking, street vendors, traveling of two-wheelers should be strictly prohibited. These not only block the cycle lane, but they're extremely dangerous for cycling. Safe design. Safe design is key when designing cycle lanes. Intersections, bus stop, entrances, and exits of buildings are all locations where collisions usually happen between cyclists and other road users. So special attention must be given to these areas. And lastly, communication and engagement. People must be aware of the changes that are being made to the street at every point of time to avoid any confusion. And this can, can be done through local news, newspapers, and social media. So let us talk more about safe speed. Vehicle speeds on streets where bicycle lanes are installed should be set at safe levels. What does this mean? A safe level is a speed at which when pedestrians or cyclists when hit during a crash, they survive the crash with not that many serious injuries. And for an average sized adult, a safe speed is approximately 30 kilometers per hour. So let us look into how we can achieve these safe speeds in our neighborhoods and cities. We can start by implementing low speed zones. Low speed zones are areas in your cities or neighborhoods 
where cars are only allowed to travel at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour or 30 kilometers per hour. Consider street closure. Many cities are briefly closing down their streets to cars. This is one way to provide safe and dedicated spaces just for pedestrians and cyclists. Collector roads and arterial roads are roads which good quality cycling infrastructure is really, really important. And the higher the vehicle speed and volumes, the more measures required to protect the cyclist. The right kind of separation between the cycle lane and the car lane must be based on the assigned speed on that particular street. Design for speed management. When bike lanes are installed, it is important to also implement measures that can help reduce the adjacent vehicle speeds. And these can be done through speed humps, chickens, and other design measures. Take a network approach. Side lanes need to pass through important destinations. Connections between origins and destinations need to be as direct as possible to make the travel easy for the cyclist. Consistency, consistency across network, the design and implementation of the whole bike network should be should follow a visual identity and a certain design standard. This can be done with the help of signages, maps, road marking, and if possible, material. As we all know by now, a successful bike lane is one that is safe and comfortable for cyclists. But what are these measures that experts consider safe for cyclists? My colleague, Wei Li, will now help you get a better understanding of the various and simple design measures and considerations that you need to keep in mind while designing cycling. Over to you, Wei. Hello, everyone. My name is Wei Li. I'm a research analyst for sustainable transport in WI China, and I'm very glad to walk you through the rest of this guide. As for how to design safe bicycle infrastructures, we need to keep these three principles in mind. First, we need to design the bicycle lanes for safety and physical distancing. And second, we need to design the bicycle infrastructures to limit conflicts at intersections, bus stops, driveways, and with other traffic modes. And thirdly, we should use the appropriate materials for each situation and consider the duration of each intervention. Here are some general principles for designing bicycle lanes. First, we need to give a minimum width of 2.2 meters for one-way bicycle lanes on arterial road. And this width can accommodate two bicycles running side by side and a safe buffer space between them. And second, we should consider the lane placement. We should place bicycle lanes at the same direction as other traffic and the bicycle lane should be next to the sidewalk. And thirdly, we should consider the entry and exit of the bicycles. And the bicycle lane design and dimension must provide safe spaces for slowing down, stopping, and dismounting. And we should avoid two kinds of dangerous design. The first dangerous design is a counterflow, that is bicycle lane going on the opposite direction without the traffic. And it can increase the risk of crashes at driveways and intersections. Therefore, we should try to avoid this kind of design. And second dangerous design we should avoid is a two-way bicycle lanes. That is a bicycle lane driving, traveling at two directions on one side of the road. And that could also increase the risk of conflict for cyclists. Another important thing to think about is the separation of bicycling with other traffic. And we should combine this thinking with the speed of the street. If the vehicle speed of the street is relatively low, for example, below 30 kilometers per hour, we can make the street a shared space between cyclists and other traffic. But we should use very visible markings and signs to mark the street as a shared street. If the vehicle speed is going up from 30 to 50 kilometers per hour, then a kind of separation is needed between the cycle lane and other vehicle lane. And we can either use some soft forms and temporary forms of separation or use more solid and concrete forms such as a curb. 
intersections is one of the most dangerous places for cyclists and we should design safe intersections for cyclists and we should follow these principles and first is visibility we should increase the visibility between cyclists and vehicles and in this aspect we need to do three things first we need to remove the vehicle parking at least 10 meters before any intersection so that drivers and cyclists can see each other clearly and second we should mark the intersections with very visible bike markings so that drivers will notice bicycle cyclists crossing the intersection and thirdly we can use bike boxes to put cyclists in front of the drivers so that they are more visible and the second aspect to design a safe intersection for cyclists is considering the turning movement of vehicles. We can do these three things. First, we can put the stop line of cars at least five meters from the crossings. And this can make drivers stop beforehand and make the crossing per cyclists more visible. And second, we can use a two-step right turn instead of a direct right turn for cyclists. And this can make them uh, more protected and less exposed to traffic. And thirdly, we should pay special attention to cyclists waiting at the corner of the intersection. And we can use curb expansions or small refuge islands to protect the cyclists uh, from the turning uh, vehicles. And we should also think about protections, protections for cyclists, especially at very large intersections. For example, we can consider refuge islands that can accommodate bicycles. Uh, that means the width of the refuge island should be at least two meters wide. And we can also consider some race crossings on minor approaches to the intersection so that cyclists can easily cross the small approach and the drivers need to slow down. And lastly, for a safe intersection for cyclists, signal is an important element to think about. At least we should install the bicycle signal head that gives a special cycling face to the signal. And we should give enough time for cyclists to cross a big intersection. And if there is conditions, we can give cyclists some signal priorities. That means they can go several seconds before the drivers and that can make cyclists more visible. And we can think about uh, the green waves. That means if cyclists are traveling at certain speed, they will always arrive at intersections with green signals, and that can make cycling more convenient. As mentioned before, safe bicycle lanes should minimize any major conflict that could lead to serious crashes. The first conflict is between the parked cars and cyclists. And the parked cars can obstruct the views of all road users and may cause crashes. If possible, car parking should be removed when installing bicycle lanes. But if we need to keep the, the parked cars, we should consider this design as shown here in the cases of New York City and Philadelphia. The bike lanes should ideally be placed on the outer side of the parked vehicles so that the vehicles can protect the cycle lane. And we should place a buffer zone between the parked cars and the cycle lane. So that when drivers or passengers coming out of the cars open the door, the door will not hit the cyclists. The second major form of conflict is at bus stops. When a cyclist is passing through the bus stop in front of it, and when a bus is approaching or leaving the bus station, a conflict usually occurs. And this conflict can be resolved by a bypass bus stop design or a floating bus stop design, as shown here in the case of Seattle. The cycle lane will usually go after the bus stop so that there's no conflict between the cyclists and the buses. If we can't create a bypass bus stop design in the short term, you can still let the cyclists passing through the bus stop area in front of it. In this case, we should use special design to make cyclists safe. We can use very visible markings 
to mark the space of cyclists and buses, such as shown here in this photo from Taiwan. And we can also use traffic coming measures and traffic warnings to slow down the buses and cyclists before they approach the bus. And finally, we should also pay attention to the conflict points of entrances to buildings, to garages, and to driveways. Uh, we can use markings to make these minor entrances more visible to cyclists and the cycle lanes more visible to the drivers. And we can also elevate the surfaces of this stretch of bicycle lane and tighten the turning radius so that the speed of vehicles turning can be slowed down. In addition to design, we should also use management and good enforcement to maintain the safety of cycling infrastructures. We can use technical measures or traffic police to enforce the speed of vehicles traveling beside the bicycle infrastructures. And we should prevent the bicycle lane from any kind of encroachment, for example, by street vendors, by motorcycles, or by delivery vehicles. And we should manage large delivery freight vehicles that are parking on cycle lanes. Uh, this could be post a uh, danger to cyclists when people are loading or unloading freight from these big vehicles. And we can hire guides or intersection coaches to help new cyclists to adapt to the new design of intersections. We can also use communication and engagement to promote the image of bicycles and to hear the feedback of cyclists. We should involve the community and use their feedback to continuously improve the bicycle infrastructures and trying to make them permanent. And we should communicate clearly with the public how the street design is changed and how they should navigate through the network. And we also should use communication methods to facilitate good behaviors of both the drivers and the cyclists. This diagram here summarizes the key strategies, principles, and indicators for building safe bicycle lanes. The safe bicycle lane strategy should integrate network and planning, respond to community needs and concerns, engage multi-sectoral stakeholders, select appropriate materials, and monitor the infrastructure and adjust accordingly. The key principles of co-creating the bicycle network with required key performance indicators are safe car speeds, network approach, safe design, management and enforcement, and communications and engagement. Creating cycling friendly cities is a process that can be improved over time. Most cities find once that they start to become more friendly to cyclists, a positive feedback loop is created. When more people want to travel by bike, more and safer infrastructures can be installed. Once cities have installed and tested the temporary bicycle infrastructure in the short term, they have the opportunity to use the experience to further improve it, attract support from users, and make them permanent over the long term. But the time for action is now. We hope this guide can be useful for Indian cities to make more and safer bicycle infrastructures. And please feel free to contact WI team for questions, suggestions, and any feedback. Thank you very much.